Hello and good afternoon, everybody, and uh, we welcome you on Canar TV, the Arab voice from Canada. Today is a special day. We usually come at nine every night, but uh, we would like to introduce a dear friend, uh, the uh, Shadow Minister of Finance and Middle Class Prosperity, uh, Mr. Uh, Jasraj Sin uh, Halan. Uh, welcome to our uh, channel and thank you for accepting our invitation and uh, promoting the new, gover the new shadow government. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute honor. And uh, uh, let me just say to all your uh, all your viewers, uh, salam alaikum. And, and again, thank you for having me here. So, uh, Jastra, can you first introduce yourself to our audience? Who are you? Which riding you represent? Your ethnic background? Well, I was born in Dubai, believe it or not. Uh, oh moved to Canada, <laughs> moved to Canada with my family when I was five years old into the riding that I get to represent today. I grew up in this riding with my with my family. Uh, we saw very tough, harsh economic times here in this riding. Uh, we used to stand in line for low income bus passes uh, in this riding. I went to high school in the riding. So this is my bread and butter is within Calgary Forest Lawn. Uh, I ended up after high school doing uh, an accounting diploma through a, a college here. And then uh, was a uh, ran a very successful home building business where we developed you know built homes, developed land, and did commercial buildings. From there, I uh, was asked by a dear friend of mine who used to be a cabinet minister in the provincial government uh, to join politics, and so I did. I did take that up. Um, I ran provincially first. I was unsuccessful. Six months later, um, this seat had opened up, and I ran in the nomination. Uh, I won, and today I continue to be. Uh, the representative of Calgary Forest Lawn on a federal level, and, I'm, and I feel very honored and blessed by that. I used to be the fine, the shadow minister for immigration, which is a big deal for our party to have an immigrant as a as their immigration critic. And now I'm very blessed that uh, our new leader, conservative leader Pierre Polyev, has entrusted me in, in, within such a uh, an important and uh, this big responsibility of finance uh, critic. Well, congratulations for the new positions. And uh, I think uh, this is one of the most important positions in any government, finance, balancing budget. Uh, I think most government can fail because of, 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 of this topic. So uh, I think you are really responsible for very important uh, now. Uh, well, well absolutely. And you know what? I, I must add that my humble beginnings... Um, our, our leader, Pierre Polyev, has the same humble beginnings as I do. So, you know, we we can share our experiences. That's why we feel the pain of what the Canadians are going through, is because we both lived through that. Our leader, Pierre Polyev, was born and, and raised here in Calgary. He saw very hard economic times. His life, he was an adopted a son. Uh, he was uh, His mother was uh, unwed uh, at the time that she had him uh, as a teenager. But these were all humble beginnings. And at the end of the day, both Pierre and I, what we want is to have uh, give others the same opportunities that we had to succeed. So that's our that's our major goal. Great. So let's start with with affordability, which is I think if you knock at the doors today, this is the first word you will hear from anybody. Uh, it's it's very important for Canadian to afford living decent life. To have a middle class, that's what was uh, famous Canada for. But do you still think really we have a middle class in Canada after what's happening recently with recessions? Um, and look, the way the way I see it is, the, and you know, the Liberal government took away their middle class, uh, you know, minister. They they didn't they didn't change the minister, but they took out the title. So, you know, it, it, it is very concerning. What I'm seeing is, is more and more Canadians are being pushed uh, out of the middle class and pushed more into the lower class by high inflation, which we call just inflation, caused by immense amounts of borrowing by Justin Trudeau, um, by uh, the amounts of debt he's putting on us and our grandchildren. Uh, the, the, the fact that the cost of living is so unaffordable today more and more people are using food banks and more and more people are being pushed to homeless shelters than ever before, including students and newcomers. Um, people can't afford gas. People can't afford groceries. People can't afford to even heat their homes anymore. And it's because of this just inflation. 
And so when we look at what the middle class should stand for, we don't see much of that anymore. And, and more and more Canadians are getting pushed out of that, unfortunately. It is. Taxes rising, prices are rising. So where do you think our economy, as a Canadian economy, which is supposed to be one of the strongest in the world, what do you see now, how it's on, on, on the stage? Well, I mean, our liberal government on the world stage is a laughing stock. If we look at Justin Trudeau on a world stage, any country he goes to, we either get embarrassed or laughed at. So we, you know, he hasn't done a really good example of making Canada the world leader that it used to be with a good reputation. Justin Trudeau also has done as much damage to our energy industry due to his ideologies as much as he can possibly do. And now he's been attacking our farmers as well. So not only does he attack and continuously attack a province like mine, Alberta, he continues to attack those that not only just produce our energy, but also produce our food. Canada should be world leading and it is world leading in our energy sector. Canada produces the most clean and the most responsible energy. And it should be world class that it, should, it can replace dictator oil around the world. But due to Justin Trudeau and his ideology, he's put up many hurdles in front of the industry. He's passed bills like Bill C-69, which we call the No New Pipeline Bill, and like Bill C-48, C that's, that's a tanker ban. I mean, we can get our, our product to the West Coast, but no tanker can take it to other markets. We need to make sure that we're, we're, we're flourishing, we're letting our energy industry flourish because they can provide clean, responsible energy to the world. And again, we can replace dirty dictator oil with it as well. So if the government, uh, the liberal government stay in power, where do you see Canada in economy-wise and financial-wise in five years and in 10 years? Well, I mean, if we just look at the last seven years, we've been in a, on a really dangerous path. Uh, we've seen inflation and where it's gotten to today because Justin Trudeau didn't, didn't control his spending at all. I mean, he said it out of his own mouth. He thinks budgets budget, budgets balance themselves. He also says he doesn't think about monetary policy. And this is coming from a G7 leader of a country. He should be more concerned about monetary policy. He should be more concerned about what his constituents and, and Canadians are going through. But he doesn't. And in the next five to 10 years, we're already seeing indications, and there's been people who have been predicting it, that we're going to be hitting a hard landing next year with a possible hard recession. And this is all caused by Justin Trudeau. There is a reason why we continuously say this is just inflation. It's being caused by the government's overspending. There's too much money chasing too few goods. And that gap is causing inflation that's caused by Justin Trudeau. And that's what we call just inflation. Let's be honest, like this problem, it's almost inflation. It's almost everywhere in the world. Nobody expected COVID and uh, it's became on all of a sudden. Uh, United States, our neighbor, have the same problem. UK have the same problem. Uh, Germany. So do you think we are special in this or do we have more power, like more resources that we can really uh, rely on? You know, it's it's a it's a typical liberal talking point from from the liberals when they say, "Well, look, we're doing better than other countries," but the fact of the matter is that's like saying, "Well, you know, your house is burning down, uh, mine will just burn down just a little bit more." It's still burning. It is still burning. You are going to lose things while your house burns. And the other point to that is that the Bank of Canada's governor said himself he has admitted to it that. This inflation is homegrown. Uh, you know, we can we can either look at the world, we can look at the world, but we should be focused on Canada itself. We shouldn't be putting up more in like increasing of the carbon tax, which is gonna is is, is inflationary. That's what the Bank of Canada said too. That these measures of um, you know attacking Canadians and and hurting them and putting the debt on their back that Justin Trudeau has, this is not the right time to do it or ever to put that your your electoral. Uh, you know, success on the back of, of Canadians is completely wrong. And to continue to borrow that our grandkids will be continuing to pay that debt is absolutely wrong. The Liberal government in on January the 1st is going to increase payroll taxes. And on April the 1st, they're going to triple the carbon tax. This is the same carbon tax that to date, the emissions have not decreased in Canada. And the Liberal government has not met a single emission reduction target yet. Yet they keep increasing the carbon tax and it's not working. It's just making life harder for Canadians. It's making heating your home harder, uh, more expensive, 
groceries are more expensive and driving is more expensive. So let me ask you the same questions. So if your party will be a government in the after two, three years, where do you see Canada in five and ten years? Much more prosperous now. What we will do is we will cancel the carbon tax. That's a job killing carbon tax that has not reduced emissions. We will actually have a real climate plan that's going to save the planet, that's going to reduce emissions, and at the same time, make sure our businesses are flourishing. We're going to get rid of Bill C-69, Bill C-48. That's not letting investment happen, and that we've seen that investment has been fleeing from Canada. We want to make sure that we're supporting our producers of energy and our food, the farmers. We're going to make sure that we have... The, the best, the, we already have the best standards here environmentally, but make sure that our product can get to other markets so that Canada can flourish. Our small businesses, our businesses overall can flourish. We need to make sure that we're not putting taxes up, more and more taxes in front of Canadians. Like we're going to see the Liberals are going to do on April the 1st and on January the 1st. We are going to make sure that we're not only just tackling the, the deficit and, and controlling inflation by, you know, controlling the spending. But at the same time, the, the industries that are helping Canada, we need to support them more and more and make sure that Canada Canadians are able to succeed. And the most important fact is get our immigration under control. And when I say that, is it's being mismanaged to a degree where people can't come to Canada, reunite with their families. Workers cannot come here to help address the labor crisis we have in this country and to help fix the economy at the same time. All these things go hand in hand. We also need more homes in this country. We had a platform in our in our uh, in our platform. We had a really great plan to get more homes built in Canada, so those that are coming here will have affordable living. So I do have some comments from from uh, viewers. I will read two or three of them. So Zena said, "I don't think Canada is heading toward recession. Uh, there is inflation, but the economy is booming." Uh, she continues. So many businesses are opening up, and employment rate keeping keep dropping keep drop unemployment maybe okay what what is your uh, views on this um well i mean it just takes for for me i talk to my constituents regularly i talk to canadians when i travel today's date people are suffering more than ever when you see that one in every six the the fact is that one in every five canadians are are not eating full meals throughout the day because they can't afford to we see one in six businesses in Canada today are um, about to shut their doors down. These are the real facts. 30% of people are using more food banks and more uh, homeless shelters than ever. These are the facts. So if we compare to what's happening to real to Canadians, this is very concerning. This is a G7 country. We know that about 50% of our refugees are living in poverty in this country as well. These are very concerning facts. And this is this should not be happening in a G7 country today. And when we look at, uh, on there, I mean, the, just on CTV today, there was a, a headline that says unemployment is actually going up because th these are the this is the reality of what's happening today in our country. When the cost of living keeps going up, when we see insolvencies going up in businesses, when these these are the kind of figures that we look to say, are we living in a livable country? And no, we're not. There was a, an article that came out about a few months ago, and even newcomers to this country, about, about there was a, more than 40% people are saying they don't want to stay in this country anymore because it's too expensive to live in. And so these are very, very concerning facts that Canada should be a world leader where people want to come to, where they want to bring their investment and talent. But under Justin Trudeau, it's not, it's not being fully seen. Uh, Ikram, uh, I think she agrees with you. She said prices these days are rocking sky. Uh, do something, please. People are suffering to put food on their tables to feed their kids. Do you want to elaborate on this? Uh, absolutely. Look, the carbon tax is making things very mo much more expensive. The, the amount of debt and the borrowing has made inflation, which we call just inflation, out of control in this country. That's making the price of everything go up. Our Conservative Party put forward two motions. They were defeated by the NDP liberal costly coalition that's taking place in Parliament right now. The first one was we said no new taxes on Canadians. They are suffering enough by the taxes that they've already implemented. They both, the costly coalition, voted that down. 
our conservative party put forward not to raise the carbon tax anymore. And and on Jan on April the 1st, they will be tripling that carbon tax, which is making home heating more expensive, your groceries more expensive, and driving your car more expensive. We put a motion to say no more raising of the carbon tax. The costly coalition of the NDP and liberals voted that down again. So they're not wanting to make the life for easier for Canadians. They're making it worse. I think you were misunderstood on the immigration point. Uh, so can you elaborate? Uh, she thinks that you, you are against immigrants coming to Canada. Are you? Absolutely saying? not. Absolutely okay. not. I'm an immigrant to this country. What I'm, what I'm saying was, let me be very clear. I, I was the shadow minister for immigration before this. We need immigration in this country. This country, success is built on immigrants. Like I said, I am an immigrant myself. I represent a riding where so many proud immigrants come here to open their own businesses and, and become the success of Canada. What I'm saying is that the system is so broken. There's so many backlogs inside the immigration system. We're not able to get people here in time. The wait times are out of control. Because of the backlog that the Liberal government has created, we've never seen this many backlogs in Canada's history. Families can't reunite with each other, which in front of my eyes, I've seen divorces happen and suicides take place just because people can't see that they're going to reunite with their husband and wives or family members in Canada. This is very sad. Employers can't get you know, workers here because of the immigration backlog. And our economy is suffering because of that. We need a strong immigration system. We need a fair immigration system. We need a compassionate immigration system that works for everybody. We need to have the, the best immigration system that will help persecuted refugees around the world that are being persecuted under tyranny to come to Canada in the right time. I myself sponsored a refugee family from Afghanistan that was being persecuted. And it took that family four years to get here. That's absolutely unacceptable. There are people around the world being persecuted, like the Hazara community, the Af Af Afghanistan community. There's the people in the, the Uyghur community. There are many different communities that we need to help them if they are being persecuted around the world. I agree. So, uh, yeah, we are, uh, Canada is a country of immigrants and uh, it's been always built on immigrants. Uh, for sure, we, we recognize the people uh, of this land, the indigenous people, and we... Uh, Thank them for hosting us and leading us through these years on this land. Uh, my last question is, uh, where do you think uh, we are heading in the sooner years? Two years or two and a half years until the new election, mostly. So where do you think we are heading in these years? Um, look, right now in the immediate, we need to help Canadians out and stop taxing them so they're, they're, they get pushed more and more into insolvency like we're seeing. And in the future, we need them to do the same thing and stop raising taxes. On January the 1st, payroll taxes are going up under this costly coalition, and so is the carbon tax. In the next two years, they need to stop that. The Liberal government campaigned on not increasing it past $50 a ton, and it's going to go up to $170 a ton. So they, they continue to break their promises. Economists are, are, are predicting that we're going to go into a recession by next year because the way that things are right now, interest rates are going to have to go up and that it might push things into, an, in, into a recession. And this is very scary. Uh, the government needs to rein in on its control and it needs to rein in on, um, on the out-of-control spending that there is. They need to stand up with Canadians and newcomers alike because everyone is suffering right now underneath them. So uh, I, I would like to, to congratulate you for this new hard position, I would say, as, as a Shadow Minister of Finance and Middle Class Prosperity. But I would like to thank you also to be with us today. Uh, last message to you, uh, Mr. Holland. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm very grateful to the great people of Calgary Forest Lawn for letting me be their voice in, in Parliament. And more importantly, our leader in putting the trust in me to handle such a a big and and a really important file uh, i'll we will continue to keep fighting down just inflation we will continue to fight for more a better safe compassionate and fair immigration we'll continue to fight for the jobs and our in our world leading uh, you know energy sector so that our economy is booming and continue to stand up for those canadians that don't feel that they have a voice anymore on a federal level uh, Mr. Holland, thank you very much for being with us. I hope uh, we can meet in uh, in person soon in Ottawa. 
uh, as we both now in Ottawa. But uh, thank you very much again, and thank for all our viewers. We'll see you very soon next time. Uh, goodbye. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.